this is important to me. I got this nine minutes to reach the people I love and care about. Your life may depend on the next nine minutes, so I suggest sitting up and listening. <laughs> All right? First off, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> we had one of those already today. He gave you a good start. I'm just a guy that was looking for answers, and I found some pretty good answers that surprised me, and I think they'll surprise you as well. This was me last year this time. 216 pounds, high blood pressure, doctor saying you got to be on medicine the rest of your life, high cholesterol, chest pains, waking up for the third time in a week with night sweats, laying in a pool of my own sweat. I got out of bed, I went to the computer, maybe some of you have done this, I looked on WebMD. I said, what in the heck could be causing these night sweats? And I found out my best hope was that I was pregnant. <laughs> Here's the problem. The other choice is where I've got AIDS. I've got leukemia, cancer. Those were my other options. I didn't like the sound of that very well. I said, I'm 45. I'm not ready to be sick. I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to st stop living. I got too many dreams to achieve. This was 65 days later. As I found the answers, the answers, they're there. The answer is obvious, but we don't see it. That's what I want to share with you. And I want you to know it's not just me. This is Emily Bowler, also from Fort Wayne. She just taped the Dr. Oz show yesterday. Transformed her life. Steve Franks, where are you? Raise your hand. Steve Franks back there just lost 42 pounds. I should tell you, in 65 days, in case I didn't, in case it wasn't obvious, high blood pressure, gone. High cholesterol, gone. Chest pains, gone. Night sweats, gone. Worry about leaving my daughter, who's there in the third row, without a dad, gone. I'm going to be here for a while to achieve my dreams, and I invite you to do the same. The doctor, I went and said, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, what can I do about it? You know what he told me? Chris, it's just part of getting old. Now something, call it denial, some in my family called it denial, but I said, look, that's a crock. I'm not ready to believe that at 45 years old, all these things are just supposed to start happening. I said, I don't believe that. Let me look for answers. And guess what? When you start looking for answers, they say when the, the student is ready, what? The teacher, will appear. the teacher will appear. Yeah. So my teacher appeared. I flopped down 9.30 at night on a Saturday, and Dr. Joel Furman was on PBS. And he, he was talking to me. It was like he was there in my living room. And everything he said was speaking to me. It really was a weird moment. But I knew about halfway through that program that my whole life was going to change. I was that sure. The next day I got his book called Eat to Live. Eat to Live. I read it cover to cover that day. That day. Then I cleaned out the refrigerator. Then I cleaned out the closet. Then I cleaned out the cupboard. Lauren, she can tell you, all the food that was bad went out. Mm -hmm. A few months later, this solidified for me. Forks over knives. If you have not seen this, this is going to be my recommendation at the end of the talk. If what I'm saying resonates with you, <laughs> don't wait till next week. Don't put your name on reserve at the library. Go buy that on the way home tonight. Because the answer is right here. So let's talk about that. We got to rethink sad. Here's the words I heard. If you're ready to eat the standard American diet, you had better be prepared to die the standard American death. Oh, God, I'm eating the standard American diet. That's what I'm doing. So I said, what is this standard American diet and what is the standard American death? Well, here's the standard American diet. And they don't call it sad for nothing, people. We're only eating 13% at the top real food. Dr. Glad said the rest of it is food-like substances. 62% of the food we're eating is not really food. It's something that was food and went through a factory and came out in a preserved form that they can put on a box and keep on a shelf for six months. 
Guess what? If it can stay on the shelf six months, it can probably stay in our stomach six months. This, this is the stuff that's so logical that once you know it, I, I, I would no more eat a Big Mac than I would eat that chair right there. Because <laughs> I, I know what it does to me now. It's not hard. It doesn't take willpower when you know the facts. That's what I'm trying to tell people. So here's the standard American death. We've got bright people here. Would you agree? Bright people in this room? Take a look right now at the person on your left and on your right. Take a good look at them. Look in their eyes. Think what their dreams and their potential are. Really do it. Think the family, the people that are counting on them. So out of you three, the one on the left, the one on the right, and yourself, one of you is going to die of heart disease. Completely avoidable. Completely optional. Look at the person in front of you and the person behind. One of you three is going to suffer from diabetes. Completely avoidable. Type 2. Type 1, not completely avoidable. Type 2, completely avoidable. Do you think that would slow down your chance to clean up the rivers? Do you think that would slow down your chances to volunteer once a week for the next 52 weeks? Do you think that would slow you down from connecting with people? See, we got people that want to do beautiful things in this room. But here's the problem. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. They got all the great ideas in the world, but they can't get out of bed. How can you implement when you feel sick? We can't. We can't. Fruits and veggies. I got, I got two minutes left, so let me jump through. Fruits and veggies, we know it's important. Look at this slide. Look at it. Look at it. The light one is how many people in that country die from heart disease and cancer. The dark is how much do they get of unrefined real plant food. That's probably not a coincidence. You gotta rethink meat. You gotta rethink hunger. I'm gonna skip this. Rethink meat. That, that, I didn't say give up meat. That's a Coney dog. I love Coney dogs. I'm not giving them up. <laughs> I'm just not eating them all the time. Okay? I'm skipping this. Where will I get my protein? Well, how about broccoli? There's more in broccoli than there is in meat for 100 calories. I'm just planting the seed that maybe what we thought is not true. This guy hasn't had meat for 10 years. He's not actually fading away to nothing. I said, where will you get your protein? You're going to be sick. The milk mustache, I'm telling you, milk, dairy is causing cancer. I just say it like it is. Do your own research, don't trust me. Do the research. Rethink, but it's hard. But it's hard. Let me tell you what's hard. Picking a banana over a Snickers bar is not hard. Paying $200 a month for your medications is hard. Learning how to make your own salad dressing, Randy, not hard. But listen, what's hard? Having your legs cut off below the knees because your body can't circulate your blood to your extremities anymore. That's hard. Learning to go to the grocery and tell what kale is, put it in a pot and boil it and put <laughs> cashew sauce on it. That's not hard. <laughs> what is hard? Let me leave you with this thought. What is hard? And what was hard for me is this. Thinking about your daughter <coughs> watching the paramedics wheel you out with a sheet on top of you because you made bad choices when it came to what you put in your mouth. There's enough in this world that's out of our control that we can't do anything about. Food is not one of them. You want to be well? You want to change the world? Change what you put in your mouth. Thank you.